to experience across different vertical industries, uh, which is one about oil and gas, real estate, retail manufacturing and services. So I started my journey uh, from 2000 with Oracle Levenai, then being part of consultant, then I moved to R2 Wealth, where I had played different roles from as a consultant to senior consultant, then to a lead on the financial side, then uh, handling the projects as a project manager. And so my journey is all about uh, into implementation, support and upgrades. So in, in terms of, then I moved from art world to the fusion financial. So my last implementations were corely on fusion financials, which were on implementation and support. So uh, in terms of my work, I did work with Oracle, uh, where I was a part of the Oracle Consulting Bangalore, then I was part of ENY as well. So this is my very short introduction in terms of my experience and the journey with Oracle. So going with the other, other slide, we are going to have the day one agenda, which is in terms of what is a fusion application and overview, fusion on-premise and cloud solutions, what is the environment releases currently, in the market, Oracle Fusion application, what is the product families? So I could see that few have been introduced as EBS already. Uh, they are familiar with the EBS. So we will be having a comparison of EBS versus Fusion as well. Then we'll be discussing on the financial course curriculum and what is uh, a case study, how technique differs from the other IT institutes. So we will discuss on all these points. So anytime if you have any questions on the technical side or anything to clarify, please uh, stop me over there and we can discuss it. Yeah. So these sessions are for whom? So definitely, you know, uh, when we talk about the Oracle Fusion financials, a myth is always there in the mind that it should be only the finance people or the people who are into the BCom, MBA, CE, or ICWA. It's, it's not like that. For sure, you know, BCom, MBA, these things will definitely help you to mold your future or career onto the functional side. Apart from that, the people from different backgrounds like engineering or any other streams, whether you, you have done MBA with project management or MBA from marketing as well, this will also help you. The reason why I'm saying here is we are going to start right from the beginning in terms of the basics, where I will also be having some session in terms of the finance, exactly when we talk about the trial balance or when we talk about the reconciliation, those things. So I will be, I will be discussing those details as well. So that will, it should be more comfortable for you people before we start into the real demo or the real fusion financials application. So any questions here before I move on? Okay, so I think it, it holds good. Yes, okay. okay, thank you. So let's try to understand uh, what is ERP and what is business process. So I could see that few uh, have just done their MBA like Omar who is from Somalia. So uh, I'm just trying to, many of you people already know about this, what is an ERP and business process, but for the few freshers who have just done their uh, MBAs or who just want to switch from the other streams to the ERP, let me just explain it. So this is more in terms of ERP stands for enterprise resource planning. So what does it mean? It means that it's more a combination of different applications. So when we talk about the financials, when we talk about the HRMS, manufacturing, supply chain, services, procurement, all this is a combination of the ER. The reason, when I talk about the finance, I'm saying, for example, let's say I'm talking about the invoices which are being created or the trans or the any financial activity. Let's say if I am paying something that is an expense. So that that is the concept of finance. HRMS is something where we talk about the people's management within the organizations. Then manufacturing is something to produce. Supply chain is how you 
maintain your uh, orders, how you maintain your stock. Services is all about how you provide different services, procurement. So all these things, we are going to di discuss it in a different mode. And ERP is all about this in an integrated manner. So here, even before we get into the ERP, one thing is very important to understand. What is a business process? So can anyone tell me what is a business process at very high level, just for my understanding, for the audience understanding? What can be a business process? Okay, so the business process is something, it's a set of tasks that directly or indirectly help your business provide the products or services to the customer. So the business process, has different combinations. One is it's reduced the risk, it provide it protect the safety, it improves the predictability, it has the superior quality, it has the greater brand protection, simplified operations and lower cost. So in the next slide, if, if we are talking about the business process, this is something where I'm I'm going when I'm going to talk about the Fusion financials. Let's say I'm talking about the accounting to financial reports. So what does this mean? It means that all these applications, Oracle applications, GL, AP, fixed assets, accounts receivable and cash management, these all come into a particular business process, which is accounting to financial report. The similar way we talk about procure to pay. Procure to pay is nothing but I'm purchasing something. And the moment I'm raising a purchase order to purchase something, then it will be ordered. It goes to the inventory. From inventory, the, the moment I have received the material into my warehouse, then definitely the vendor is going to send the invoice. Then for that invoice, I have to make a payment. So this is what procure to pay is all about. So here we are talking about how we are going to interrelate the business process to the ERP application. So when, when we are going to have the session, I will be taking a real live ex examples or scenarios, like how, for example, one of the implementation or one of the scenario within that implementation, how it is related to the business process and how we are going to map that to the ERP application. So we will discuss in detail when we take up the modules individual. So there are similar to these in terms of manufacturing, design to release, then order to cash. All these are the business processes. Our main concentration will be mostly 90% on these accounting financial reports and little bit on procure to pay as well as on order to cash, which also involves order management inventory accounts receivable. Going to the next slide. So what is exactly the Fusion about? So Fusion application is a complete suit of modular cloud applications. So when we are talking about supply chain, we are talking about here, the procurement, human resource, finance. So these are all the combinations which we are talking about. So earlier, Fusion, Earlier to the fusion financials, when we talk about the EBS or peer to that, all the applications were in a scattered mode. Scattered mode means, for example, human capital management. So HRMS was a part of PeopleSoft. So which was another totally ERP application within that. So CRM was from Sybil. So now what Oracle has decided is they have picked few of the best product features across the different softwares or different vendors, then they merge it and they call it as a fusion financials. The main reason of this is the Oracle wants to have a one solution under its fusion umbrella. So the customer, if let's say I, I have a couple of requirements on the CRM side where I'm dealing more to do with customers on day-to-day -day basis, I Oracle don't want to lose that business or they don't want to have any lose or weak points in terms of their application integration. So that is the reason Fusion came into picture. So here we are highlighting on customer CRM part, 
financial, human resource, procurement, governance, portfolio management, supply chain management. So our core activity will be in terms on the financial side. So apart from this, this technology is built on fusion middleware and, and the architecture is on the fusion, Oracle fusion architecture. So when we talk about Oracle cloud versus on-premise, so let me uh, put it in that way. So the people who are already been working on the EBS, they already know about on-premise because EBS is on-premise. Now, when the Oracle Fusion came up, they came up with the concept of cloud. The reason being, they wanted to reduce the cost. They wanted to have the optimization. They wanted to ensure that customer is more focusing on driving their business, more focusing on driving their operations. Being the competitive world today, every customer wants to be ahead of another competitor. So instead of concentrating more on how I will manage my server, how I will upgrade my applications, how I'm going to maintain all these things, the challenges, considering those points, Oracle came up with the concept of Oracle Cloud. So the difference between on-premises and Oracle Cloud is on-premises is something where the, the customer is going to take care about everything in, in terms of their hardware, in terms of applying the patches or maintaining the application, downtime, everything. But in terms of Oracle Cloud, everything will be taken care of by the Oracle itself. So going through the slides, we will discuss on what are the advantages of Oracle Cloud. So any questions here before I move on? Okay, so it agrees because these days you, you also need to have infrastructure in terms of firewalls then the customizations, then implementations, it takes longer time. But when we move on to the cloud ERP, the cost is reduced because all those in terms of redundant hardware, in terms of maintaining, the patches or maintaining the applications security wise, everything is being taken care by the Oracle itself. Okay. And also the typical implementation time for cloud ERP is much less compared to the on-premise ERP. So that is the reason cloud ERP is much becoming much more uh, famous these days across the industries. And you will find a lot of openings which come up, mostly people asking, the companies asking for the financials or for the cloud ERP consultants. So going with the understanding of what exactly is the cloud versus on-premises. So we could see that traditional IT is all about the on-premises. Can someone, uh, the noise, uh, background noise. Can you please go on mute? Thank you. Venkat just joined. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so when we talk about the traditional IT, it's all about the on-premises. When we talk about the IAS, this is infrastructure as a software, as a service, sorry. So this is all about like the application runtime security databases servers is managed by the client and the rest is taken care of by the vendor or by the Oracle. So when we talk about platform as a service, applications is managed by the client, then everything is managed by Oracle or the vendor. When we talk about software as a service, everything is taken care of by the vendor or the Oracle. So I just, when we talk about SAS, I just need to log in through a browser into my application. I just start doing the transactions. I no need to worry about where this application is residing, all those stuff. I, 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 will, be limit, I will be having a limited headaches when, when I talk about SA software as a service. So that is the reason this is becoming very, very much famous in the market. 
so this is about the fusion family so we our concentration mostly or maximum will be on the financial side where we will be talking on the fusion financials gl apr fixed assets and cash management so when we talk about the fusion family we have the cx cloud which is again the crm scm human capital management epm enterprise management scm and the data cloud so we will be concentrating more on this erp cloud which is a part of the financials so this is the overall fusion applications complete modular suite of applications so our concentration throughout the sessions or the training on the financials will be on the general ledger accounts payable asset management payments and collections accounts receivable cash expense the common modules and the kpis dashboards and extended so apart from this also we have the oracle fusion human capital management which takes care about the human resources supply chain portfolio management which is mostly for the project managers fusion procurement crm and we have the kpis and dashboards which will be discussing and we have something called as oracle fusion grc so this is more to do with the security of the applications so this is the overall environment releases which the oracle fusion started with it started with 11.1.1.5.1 .1, which was a beta version then we got 11.1.2.0.0 which was released to and going ahead currently we have the latest version which is the r13 or release 30 so there has been a lot of improvised uh, features uh, improvised features has been done right from release 1 to 12 to the 13 and we will be working or our our most our all the setups everything will be on the release 13 so when we talk about the oracle fusion financials modules these are all the modules which we are going to discuss or going to have the sessions for it so i will be starting with general ledger then i will move to the accounts payable then to the receivables then to the assets then to the cash management so all these are interrelated and integrated so how does the tech lead makes a difference here when we talk about as mr krishna said that earlier we we the trainers are into the real industry ex expertise so i had worked on almost six implementations where and couple of n number of support projects and upgrades so based on my experience right from ebs to the fusion so when when i take up a class or the sessions i let's say for example i talk about a calendar in the general ledger so i correlate that how this is correlated to the business why we need to do that setup what is the importance of it so and how these modules are integrated across so all those things i will be discussing with the real industry based my experiences my discussions with the clients my discussions with the accountants cfos and with different technical teams across so i will try to put all my experiences into these sessions so these are the important topics module wise which i have highlighted here will be part of the training so we will start with the business unit legal entity what is the concept of primary and secondary ledgers sub ledgers chart of accounts calendars all these things so let me take a small example on chart of accounts so how we are going to start on that or what is the concept of training on the chart of accounts so chart of accounts is one of the major core activity in the fusion applications or i could say across the erp system so we try to understand because i could see that many of the audiences are fresh here from mba so i will take them exactly what is the industry expecting when you complete this course so when i talk about chart of account it's not just we define it in the system and we move ahead with transactions no 
we need to understand what can be the impact, what is the impact of these startup accounts within the real applications in the real industry. And if something goes wrong, what can be the pros and cons of it? What is the advantage and disadvantage of defining the startup account? Something like that. So our training will be based most on the real industry facts and figures with more on in terms of what could be, why I need to do this is more important in the training. I need to understand the basic concepts. Then only when you go through your interviews or any of your other, your career growth, if the question is thrown in different ways, then you should be able to un answer it. The reason is you should be able to understand the concept. So that is, where we will be, the tech IT leads will be differentiated from the other trainings. So talking in terms of the fusion tables topics, we'll be starting with the setups, invoice options, payment options, payment terms, distribution sets, periods. So all these are the features, the important features which I will be covering. So I have highlighted here the core important features. Yes, apart from that, there will be different few of the other features will also be there, which will be covered in it. So the, the reason why I'm putting it, uh, these sort of slides is to make you understand that we are going to cover each and everything. That is the first point. Then we need to ensure that even a payment terms looks a very small thing. You know, payment term is something where I talk about in the application, just I define it as a 30 days. No, but what happens is it has definitely a long-term business impact. When it goes, when the vendor is not making it, when we are not making a payment to the vendor, so how it can lead to a legal obligation, whether it can be a customer or the vendor. So the payment terms make a major difference on. So when I talk about banks, how these are interrelated to different modules. When I talk about invoice types, I'm talking about here the standard invoice, credit memos, debit memos. So all those things we will be discussing in detail. So apart from that, I also mentioned here integration as the payables is integrated with fixed assets, cash management, and the GL. So we will be discussing in real time scenarios what exactly this integration is all about. So talking in terms of receivables, these are the important topics which will be covered. We start with system options. We, we start with statement cycles. What exactly is a customer? What is a customer profile? All these things will be covered in the sessions going forward. So the similar way we talk about the cash management where we are going to what exactly is the cash management, why we need to do that. See, the reason here is one thing we need to understand. It's not just about I take up the session or I had a training on fusion financials and after 70 hours or a couple of months I walk out. No, the concept should be clear here. Whether I had been part of the EBS or I had been into this industry for last couple of years or I am a fresher right now, I'm just starting. So everyone needs to understand that why are we into these sessions? when you are putting your hard earned money, when you are putting your efforts, when you are spending your time to understand the application or the concept, it should be very clear from what scenario, from where if I am doing this setup, the first thing should come in my mind is how it's going to impact the business. Let's say for example, if I go to the user and he says that I have a calendar of Jan to December and with the period adjustments of three periods or four quarters. So what exactly it means? So I will be making that first as an understandable, then I move into the topics. Because unless and until why we need to have this option is not defined properly and the concept is not clear, it's, it's not just, you know, I just log in. It's not something like an application, a survey form or something I just go through the glimpse and I just complete my training. No, that should not be the concept here. The concept should be very clear why I'm trying, why I'm learning, what is the reason behind this of each and every setup I am doing. 
because you know these implementation if it is done well and good it goes into the production that production transition happens as a support then later on it happens as a upgrade so we need to understand from this point of so any setup which i am doing it on the system it first has a definitely a implementation impact then definitely once it moves to the production it has a support impact then if i'm going to upgrade it how it's going to impact so when whenever i'm going to take any sessions on any of these modules i will be discussing those in detail as well. like how if i'm going to do this setup properly what can be the advantage in the implementation if i do it wrong way how it's going to impact the support how it's going to impact the upgrade so those things will be discussed going forward so apart from that we will also be discussing on the fusion ex expenses which is cash advance approving the cash all those things so in terms of fusion fix assets the important topics which we will be covering is how we are going to create the structure for value sets for category location asset fees now the question comes in my mind as a fresher is i might be from a different background or i just completed my mba so how will will i be able to get into this application and start working on it once i am done the training or will i be able to do a proper training because i may not be knowing the full concept of fix assets so what i will be doing is before even i start a session on this i will spend at least 5 to 10 minutes on the processes of the asset so when i say for example asset calendar how this calendar is different from the gl calendar that we need to understand how asset book is different from the set of book from the gl perspective how i can i add an asset what what is the importance of a category of asset location asset keeping what is the concept of depreciation what is the difference between an inventory and asset this is more we need to understand whether you are from finance background or you are not but i am going to start on the basic of these things spending some time trying to understand your knowledge your in depth knowledge so based on that we can proceed for so if i don't understand the concept of depreciation there is no point of me taking you through all this concept and just completing the sessions it it will not help us because depreciation is a major concept of fixed asset why we need to run the depreciation what is depreciation what why we need to run it what is the impact of this these are the things which a real time industry expertise can share with you so that is what i am going to or trying to do when we discuss on this topics so again we will be discussing in terms of fusion tax i know in in middle east the tax is not having that much importance but other than that every other continent is definitely having a tax as a major uh, module or the impact is there so we will be discussing in detail on the tax regimes taxes all those things so apart from that we also need to understand few of the common fusion features like data migration when we talk about file based data import or application development file data or when i am going to export a, a we will be discussing on export and import feature so my question as an audience comes is i am a consultant or i am just a mba or the finance guy is it necessary for me to understand these technical concept of data migration i would say yes not in detail in depth but at least you should be knowing what is the concept of data migration what is there are couple of features which are provided by fusion so we need to understand on those and apart from that we also need to understand what is the reference data sets rapid implementation and when we talk about doing the implementations these four factors are major important it plays any any customer i am going to implement it the first question they ask us is how we are going to move our historical data historical data is nothing but the transactions which has been done throughout the years in their xyz systems so how we will migrate those into oracle applications 
right? Because see, everywhere, wherever you go into implementations, you will find this for sure. There is no system in the world where they, where they are not using it. Definitely they are using, either it can be Tally or it can be any other systems and they want to move to Oracle ERP, right? So this discussion is mandatory. So I will, when we discuss on this, I will take up exactly the concept of open items, which are called as open items. So we will discuss on how we will take up the AP invoices or how we will take up the AR invoices, migrating the fixed assets. These all will be discussed in detail because you know, wherever I have implemented, it's a mandatory for us to discuss this. We have to check out a plan and based on the data, again, we will be using these features. So these are all interrelated. You know, and it, it's always good even for technical people to understand what is the concept of open items or open AP invoices, or what is the concept at least of fixed assets. So what happens is uh, when a technical person understand these concepts, it will be very easy for the functional consultant to get synchronized with each other. So that will really help in resolving many of those issues which can be encountered later once the validations are done. So we will be discussing those features as well. So when we talk about the comparison between the EBS and Fusion as many of our audience are already done with the EBS. So this is where we talk about in instance, how EBS versus Fusion is different. What is the methodology? So earlier it was, AIMS, now it is Oracle Unified methodology. What is the permission called as earlier? It was a responsibility, now it is called as role. The reason why I highlighted is because I could see that based on my earlier sessions and trainings as well, many people are moving from EBS to Fusion because now this just Fusion is very hot kick across the industry. In fact, like people working on 11i, or R2 well, they want to move to Fusion and it's, it's not a major challenge. So that is the reason I highlighted here. And in fact, when we do the setups and when we discuss in terms of, let's say when I'm talking about the permissions, right? When I talk about the role, I will also be explaining what I earlier was in EBS. So people who are already familiar with the EBS can understand the concepts. So when we talk about the account setup manager, now it is called as functional setup manager. So all those things we will be discussed. I will, I will be just not comparing each and everything apple to apple, but at least I will try to highlight the major features between EBS and Fusion. So as discussed earlier, we were talking about on premises versus cloud, right? I, I, I did highlight that, that cloud is one of the most promising feature applications and more demandable. So why we need to have the cloud? The reason is it definitely reduces the risk. So it excludes the cost overruns and delays. Then we have stopped the five-year cycle. So where we talk about you know rollouts and upgrades and all those things that will be taken care of very easily within the cloud prim, cloud applications and innovation continuous. So in terms of, you know, I did encountered, I let me put one small example where I had encountered the EBS versus fusion fund, fusion cloud challenge. So, you know, organizations definitely have a big challenge in terms of maintaining the databases, applying the patches and all those things. And Oracle frequently keep releasing the patches, which is again a big challenge to the customers. So the moment I we raise any SR service request telling that I had this problem or this feature is not there, they release a one-off patch or a hot fix or a patch will be released. Means they will be releasing a solution which we need to apply in our system. So we can't do it because either we have we are outdated or we have to upgrade to so and so releases to apply the, that particular patch. So when we talk about the cloud, everything is being taken care of by the Oracle. So they will just mention us, 
by so and so date and time the application we will be applying the patches the system will be down so once they apply the patches we get a notification and the moment we log in we could find that feature so this the reason i am highlighting this point is here because you know i am not talking about one or two users or 20 or 30 users i'm talking about at least the 1000 to 5000 users imagine when i need to get the system down how much coordination or communication between the different departments i have to make and convince the management of it and what will be the impact of the downtime and all those things and what if something goes wrong and my system is not up so all those challenges has been addressed by the cloud print cloud application so when we talk about best practices yes as we keep updating the oracle will be keep updating with the features so that will be automatically updated it increases the productivity as i, I could say that if everything is being taken care as a part of software as a service then the customer can concentrate more on getting the business rather than maintaining or you know, getting themselves into operations so in terms of move quickly we can if let's say for example if i want to acquire or a new branch or i want to have a new uh, branch has been open i want to have some of the applications integrated with it. so it will be very easy because it's part of the cloud i don't need to worry worry some in terms of infrastructure or in terms of any other thing so in terms of the course details so we will be having an in depth understanding of the applications which is general ledger payables receivables fixed assets and cash management for all these i already highlighted in my earlier slides on what are the important topics which we will be covering so i will be taking up on how to set up administer and use your financial cloud application even rather than how to set up i will also add one point here which i missed to add it up here why i need to do the setup why i need to do this is more important rather than how to set up see if i know the concept if i come to a conclusion that why i need to do it then how to do will be much more easier and when i know the concept of why i need to do it administration will be much more easy for me so i believe in going with why rather than you know just jumping to how to do the setup so i will also be providing the insight based on my real time industry experiences across different verticals so let me put a small example here when i talk about the reason why i highlighted uh, like i had been into different verticals is like gas industry or retail or services something like that the reason being i will be taking each module with different vertical examples of real scenarios so let's say for example see we are we are all attending these sessions to have a best career to attend going forward the interviews to take up our assignments and all those things right so when we talk about interviews we are not sure i mean said tomorrow i might get and once i am done with these trainings or i am ready to face the interview i am not sure whether i will be getting a call from a gas industry or i am getting a call from the service industry or from a retail industry right so when i am going to talk to you about each modules right so let let me just take it uh, one slide ahead and i will go back again so this is what i am talking about the case study the challenges what we face in the industry i am trying i will be putting those challenges and we will be taking assignment as a case study so we will be taking for each module what is the challenge like how i encountered one of the requirements within that industry or within that client what was the challenge and what is the solution right so what we will be doing is i will share the challenge then in the forum we will be discussing the solution the reason is when you attend any of the interviews you are posed with different questions you will be easily able to handle it because your concept should be clear 
you are see i when when we talk about in fact i ha had been i'm i'm also been part of the hr recruitment as a recruitment uh, techy panel so when we talk about or we take the interviews to the uh, to any of the candidates we don't ask them okay tell me how do you do this setup so that is something okay i go to the calendars i do the setup no we will be giving one scenario okay tell me for example i have a requirement from the client side where i need to have the payment terms 30 60 90 and apart from that i also need to have the immediate one so what can be the difference of it what can be the impact of it? so those sort of tricky questions will be put or for example let's say i have a data for last 5 years and i am interested only to move those data which is open or even historical so how i am going to handle it or let's say for example i am having a transaction where i have done in the receivables a trans a invoice has been done and already i have submitted and transfer to the gl but i could not find in gl what can be the reasons for it or how i can go back from a transaction from gl to the er so those sort of things or the challenges we put across we discuss in the forum i am talking about module by module because i want to take it each case study for gl separately for fixed assets for receivables and for the payables so we will take it in that more detail so going back to our discussions here so we will be having an insight to the applications apart from that we will be also having the real time industry experience and we will be having we will be providing you enough knowledge to have the hands on to gain the general ledger implementation essential certification which you can do it and through the training you will be developing a deep understanding as how to implement understand administer and all those things so apart from that see training is not only we will be doing it for the implementation purpose no we also you know many of the guys who completed the trainings they also get a calls for the oracle support because implementation may not be everywhere but support is almost everywhere in most of the our uh, industries so i will also be discussing how this particular module within the gl what can be the support concepts why we need to let's say for example if one or I, we have raised a ticket with the oracle and if oracle is saying to create a business scenario how we are going to do that how it's going to help on the support side what is the difference between the implementation and support we need to understand those concepts because i am not sure if, if i have done training after a couple of months i may get a call where i might be part of the implementation team or i might be part of support team so you should be well aware and be ready with all your concepts of implementation support test so when we talk about the course details uh, it will be for one hour sessions which will cover 70 hours it will be a monday to saturday and the time will be 8 to 9 am ist so these are the detail in terms of course details so going this i have already discussed on the case study so any questions on the case study anything on on this to share okay so uh i will be uh, requesting mr krishna to take it from here team any questions so far any doubts no sir it's okay uh yeah hi krishna mukesh here hi mukesh uh so krishna actually i am from abs background right okay. and i have an uh, implementation uh, most of my experience is into implementation only right <laughs> so as what i understand is the oracle ebs and oracle cloud the, those are two completely different implementation uh, strategies correct right so yes. uh, when we start with the oracle cloud strategy it's a different with the like uh, role based and all everything yes. is there yes 
Yeah. So I hope uh, we'll be covering uh, much uh, everything in detail how to implement because I think uh, Basha has already mentioned that apart from implementation, we'll be covering uh, support part as well. But yeah. I think uh, as a when we start with any particular thing, uh, so first thing would be implementation. How this cloud implementation will do, uh, and we'll do complete hands-on on that part, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh... Yeah, thanks, Mukesh. I, I really appreciate your question on this. So let me uh, answer on this. So when we when I talk about implementation and support, definitely we will start the basics of implementation. It's it's good that you are into EPS, but as yes, the fusion is totally a different technology which is coming up. So we will be starting from the scratch in terms of fusion, and we will go first in terms of implementation. Then once we are done with that particular module implementation is done and we have a sort of assignment for a case study, then I move to the support of that. Because unless and until we don't do the implementation, there is no concept of understanding on the support side. So once, let's say for example, if I done something wrong set up in the implementation, how it can be impacted in the support that will be discussed only during the support part. But yes, I will. we will be taking up only through the basics and we will start only with the implementation concept first. Yeah, thank you. Yes, please, any other questions? And Mukesh, we also explain everything from the scratch, like configurations. We configure uh, enterprise structure and then modules and then later transactions. Yeah, we'll be covering this role-based and everything that would be yeah, there, right? Of course, without yeah. covering that role-based, uh, we can yeah. proceed further. Okay, and uh, we'll be covering the intercompany as yes, well? we'll be, yeah, we'll be covering the intercompany. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, hi, myself, Hamid. Just wanted to know like uh, whether we are going to cover OBIE and that Hyperion. Uh, no, Amit, uh, you know, our, our concentration is mostly on the fusion financial side. So as I highlighted, GLE Hyperion, uh, let me take this question, Basha. Hyperion, we are, not, we are not covering, but ODB and OBI we are covering. Okay. okay. And I have a technical faculty. So the technical faculty will take a separate session for all of us to cover the ODB and OBI. But uh, basics. If you, want in knowledge on, yeah, if you want in-depth knowledge on BI and uh, OTBI, you have to attend technical sessions. Okay. So okay. basic knowledge, whichever functional consultant is required on the BI and OTBI, that I'll plan for a separate session with my technical faculty. Okay? Okay. Okay. Fine. Thanks. So any, any other questions, please? And batch from Monday onwards, oh, sorry, uh, tomorrow onwards. Batch from tomorrow onwards, time is 8 to 9 a.m. IST. Any concerns with the timing? No, sir. No. Daily one hour session, Monday to Saturday classes are there. And time slot is 8 to 9. From tomorrow onwards, you can use the same meeting ID. <sighs> Any more questions? Uh, so, so, Krishna, uh, one thing. Uh, so, we'll be getting an access to Oracle Cloud Instance, right? Correct. To practice and all. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 